Hello everybody, this is Reggie. I want to make a video for my Muslim friends and the purpose of this video is to show why the claim that the Bible has been corrupted is meaningless. This is specifically uh, for Muslims and I am interested in their response so please feel free to respond okay it is a popular claim by Muslims to say that the Bible is corrupted and cannot be trusted and I can understand why they say that but uh, I've been trying to show Muslims why it doesn't matter if the Bible is corrupted because some of the stories in the Quran reflects the corruption of the Bible in the Quran and I'm gonna show you what I mean towards the end I made a video already and specifically addressing the virgin birth but before I get to the virgin birth which is the main example that I use to show that corrupted items from the Bible made its way to the Quran I want to give you a brief history of the Bible but really it should be Bibles because there are more than one type of Bible starting with the first of the Abrahamic faiths which is Judaism right Judaism Ju Judaism was first in line uh, no people say that you know Moses wrote the Torah whatever but the Jewish Bible uh, consists of three parts and together it's called the Tanakh okay so as the Tanakh was being put together as a Muslim would they consider my question is would they consider that a sort of a change in other words the Torah was first then comes the Nevaim or something like this uh, and then the Katum uh, I'm messing it up but as the, the, the writings were being uh, gathered, would that constitute a change? Because whenever the people who canonized the Jewish Bible finally got together and they said, okay, this is our holy book. At that point, you know, for Jews anyway, this is the, the last and final word. Uh, but when the Christians came and uh, Jesus so uh, excuse me when the Jesus was supposedly born he did what he did died and went wherever he went his followers later on uh, wrote some letters and so on and so forth uh, and then the stories the four Gospels were written and then they added their writings onto the Jewish uh, Tanakh and then they changed that part to call it the Old Testament because they believe that their writings was the new latest and greatest and final revelation from the same God later on the Christians went to divide into two major denominations the Catholics and the Protestants the Catholics have 73 books the Protestants have 66 and there's another major group called the Eastern Orthodox which has as much as 81 books so there are different Bibles and basically each group adds books which they basically like and uh, I find it to be very interesting that Catholic Christians 
they add their seven books on the Jewish side and the Jews who do not recognize uh, Christians as an authentic religion right they separate themselves from the New Testament but the Catholics went ahead and it, they put their seven extra books on the Tanakh or the Old Testament so uh, the Jews you know they don't accept it the Protestants they don't accept the seven extra books that the Catholics adopted on the Christian the, the, the Jewish side of the of the house the Old Testament and the Eastern Orthodox Ethiopian Church they have uh, another uh, another four extra books so you have different Bibles um, and so when the Muslim says that the books have been changed part of the problem is that since one group does not acknowledge the other one right then in their eyes the other ones are just um, fraudulent but they believe that their book is the correct book and that it hasn't been changed so to recap the uh, Jews have the Tanakh which is divided essentially into 24 what they call books the Christians took the Jewish stories and they added uh, to them right and then they reordered the Jewish books as well that's something else to consider and then the Christians divided into two or more Protestant and Catholic and so on and so forth which each group when they when they split from the other they don't acknowledge their former right so essentially it's as if it's a, a brand new Bible and they start like a they start all over again so it doesn't matter um, if there was any previous changes or whatever the case is they they only like their books now I'm, this is the part I'm going to get to with the uh, virgin birth when I ask Muslims about the virgin birth they say that God can do anything more specifically they say that God just says and it is they also use Adam and Eve as an example to say that God can create a man uh, at, with no mother no father and so on and so forth and that's their belief but with the virgin birth there's actually a history when the Christians were trying to prove that Jesus was somebody special a messiah they often appeal to the Jewish Bible they would go and find different verses to try to prove that Jesus fit a messianic um, promise or prophecy during that same desire they went to Isaiah chapter 7 and I encourage you to read it and from Isaiah chapter 7 verse 14 on down um, it talked about a, a woman a virgin giving birth but what the Muslims don't seem to realize is that the word virgin was kind of mishandled by the Christians it could have or should have been young woman um, there's still some debate about that but essentially uh, the Jews accused the Christians of taking that story and and forming a, a legend around Jesus saying that he was born of a virgin so when I asked the question to Muslims right where where did the Christians get the virgin story from there's a lot of confusion I think on their part as to what I'm asking they automatically appeal to miracle miracles they say that well God can do anything or God has power to make virgins give birth and or well uh, G, um, Adam was created out of nothing basically so he can do it again but what I tried to what I'm trying to do is to have him go back into the history of the Bible and to read up on that particular subject 
So my suggestion to them is that since the Christians, right, basically retrofitted Jesus to fit prophecies and Muhammad was around Christians and Jews, when he made up the, the, the or he um, got the stories of the Quran from wherever he got them from, supposedly the angel Gabriel, what I'm saying is that he copied have, not knowing the history of the virgin birth and they put that in the Quran. So if the Bible is corrupted, then he just took a corruption and put it into the Quran. Because number one, everyone should know that virgins cannot give birth without uh, intercourse with a male and, and you know, with the, without sperm. That should it should be that simple. But with faith, it appear it appears that it disables their reasoning skills, or they appeal to uh, miracles. And the reason why that's not a good thing is because, for example, Muslims reject the Trinity, right? So, if a Christian were to say that God had a son by virtue of a miracle, would the Muslim accept it? Probably not. That's why miracles are not a good uh, way of getting out of these situations. You cannot just say it's a miracle and, and that automatically makes it true. So um, I was trying to come up with some graphics and all that, but I just wanted to just get it out there. Maybe I'm going to make another video showing you the timeline. Um, I, I want to ask some people some questions, but basically uh, the Jewish Bible came first, the Christian Bible came second. The Quran came third, right? And there's still more Bibles being made. Most notably, the Mormon Bible was made. The um, Jehovah Witnesses made their versions. Versions. So I mean, this is a constant thing. People just make holy books, right? Uh, so it doesn't matter that the Bible is corrupted, especially if you have in the Quran a story of the virgin birth, and Muslims don't know where that story came from uh, once they go back and they learn the history and find out that the Christians made up the story to make Jesus be a superhuman then they, hopefully they will see that the Quran after all is, is just another book that is claimed to be holy so that's all I had tonight um, if you have any uh, comments I would love to hear them. questions of course ask them and uh, I'll see what I can do. Alright, thank you.